third episode. Oh, good afternoon. Thank you for joining me on another episode of Ask Sharifa Videocast. We have a very special guest today, and I'm excited. I think this is my first interview for this week. It's been a very busy week, Whew. but this one, I really believe you're going to enjoy. So as always, I'm going to ask you to do what I always ask you to do, and that's to go ahead and share this interview, share this video, because friends do not let friends miss out on Ask Sharifa. That's right. So if your friends miss out, it's not their fault. It's your fault because our guest is amazing. He's someone you definitely want to know. He is a podcaster. He's an author and he's an entrepreneur among other things. But we'll find out more about him over the next few minutes. Mr. Darren Paltrowitz. Good afternoon, Darren. How are you? Fantastic. Thank you so much for having me. It's an honor to be here. You are so welcome. Now we are we have people tuning in on the in the chat. So if you have questions, if you have comments, please feel free to ask them in the comments section. Yes, that's right. We want to hear from you. So go ahead and join the conversation. We have Dr. G. Alfred Palmer, who's joining us. Good afternoon, Dr. Palmer. Tony Jenkins is in the house. Tony Jenkins is amazing. I'm going to have to get her as a guest on Ask Sharifa Videocast. We have Ryan Austin. So many pe more people are joining us. But Darren, it's about you. Right now, it's about you. So tell us a little <laughs> bit about yourself and what you do. Well, first off, am I getting you from Long Beach, California today? Yes, sir. Okay, you're getting me from Long Beach, New York. So it's the Long Beach to the <laughs> Long Beach connection there. You know, Dang, how Long often Beach. do you hear that? Not very often. The only time I hear it is when I t people ask me where I am, and I'm like, Long Beach. And they're like, Long Beach, California? Long Beach, New York. I'm like, Long Beach, California. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, it's really uh, great to be speaking to somebody from your part of the woods. I should be going there in July for the first time, so probably going to have to hit you up and ask where I should go in Long Beach, California. Absolutely. Not only Long Beach, but just in the surrounding area. I mean, I can tell you everywhere you want to visit, want to see, you know, maybe we'll have to have a coffee or lunch. Sounds good to me. Sounds good to me. Yes. But you got your start in the music industry. You got in a kind of unusual way. Will you tell us a little bit about that, Darren? Sure. So when I was a teenager, I wanted to get tons of free CDs and free tickets. And of course, I didn't have unlimited financial resources. So I started looking in CDs and seeing like, what are the email addresses and the websites? And this was the early days of the internet. So I started uh, just reaching out to managers and going, hey, do you need an intern? Mm -hmm. And one of the people actually took me up on that. And I volunteered in 98 to build him a website. Never had done that before, but wound up building his website, interning for him and his management company. And you know, 10 years later, he signed one of the artists I was working with to a publishing deal. So uh, really, that all goes back to relationships or everything in super long term. Wow, an intern. It seems in the music industry, people are much more willing to become an intern. Oh, yeah. Other you know, just get your foot in the door. So what made you decide that you wanted to be hmm. an intern? I think it was just wanting to be around people that I super admired and wanted to be around greatness. And luckily that manager was uh, the manager of my favorite band at the time. And that uh, led me to other gigs and other jobs because other people who loved that band said, you worked with them and then immediately I had credibility. It's the same mm -hmm. kind of thing with all the other work I've done, that one mm -hmm. project led to another, good work led to good work. Mm -hmm. Okay, so where did you, so you started as an intern, and what was that experience like? How did it grow? Where did it go? Tell us a little bit about, about that. Sure, that was for an artist management company, and that was the super early days of the internet, 80, uh, 98, 99, 2000, where e-commerce had not been built yet. We we're still a bunch of years away from social media being the norm and all that, so you know, it was pretty much just try it. And if it works, keep doing it. And there were still people funding things and people were still buying records. But at the same time, um, touring was not as profitable as a business model. Meeting greets had not existed yet. So one of the bands that I worked with, I was running their, their mailing list for them. So it was really a chance to do the direct correspondence and find out what people wanted and didn't want from their bands. And so, you know, you weren't charging for the meeting greets. You were just saying, hey, uh, come see us at the merch table. And you learn quickly that the artists that run to the merch table right after they get off stage sell more merchandise. And that's a, just a profitable kind of thing to do. Oh, wow. Now, 
It's amazing. You know, I love it when people, I love to look at where people start, you know, because I built my first website in 1994. I just Whoa. released my signs. You might be an entrepreneur. Right. And it talks about that 25 year journey. And so that's why I keep asking about the intern, the intern, the intern, you know, and many people may feel like, oh, well, you know, it was just the intern, but it shows the progression. How you can just get in the door somewhere, get your foot in, learn, be around the right people. And because now you're a podcast host. That is correct. That's correct. And the podcasting grew out of other work that I was doing in high school and college, which was interviewing artists, you know, comedians, rappers, people on TV, et cetera. And my wife eventually, you know, kind of gave me the tip of, you've got all these interviews. Why don't you do a podcast of your own? And, you know, mm -hmm. eh, I don't know. Am I good enough to do that? Well, you know, then I have to learn how to do the audio. Well, I eventually learned how to just do the audio myself, learn how to do the, uh, the editing. And mm -hmm. so I finally launched it about a year ago, do an episode every two weeks or so. And it used to be that I was just like using interviews that I'd recorded for other articles. And now it's I'm actually getting people who specifically say, yeah, for the podcast, cool. Mm -hmm. So I really, it's one of the most passionate projects I've ever done. And it's a lot of work, but I love it. And when an episode comes out and you know that you yourself did the interview, you edited it, you put up the social media, it's just real, a, a great creative outlet. Do you feel the same? Yes, I do. Except for I don't do all the editing and all that stuff. I love to be live. I love that this is Facebook live, you know, because people want to see reality. They want to see what the real is. So I've had different interviews, things happen, you know, everything happens it's unedited it's just mm -hmm. real life and that's why i like to sit down and have real conversations i've even really stepped away from the whole interview aspect to mm -hmm. more of a conversation so that's why even you know we had a few more people francis pullen joined us essie bull david wellborn Welcome. my cousin Kyle <laughs> joined us. you know allows everyone to join the conversation this is just a conversation we're right. learning from you they're giving us comments and agreeing. So it's a wonderful conversation. But I do want to go back a little bit to what you said about, you know, before you started the podcast, you really weren't sure. I speak to so many people who may have a great, you know, maybe they have a great voice. Maybe they love interviewing people. Maybe they love discussing a certain topic. Now, I feel they may be a great fit for a podcast. And they're like, no, I can never do that. I would never be able to do that. You know, is some people have this who am I kind of um, sure. attitude and I love like you're just so laid back you're just like this is me <laughs> you know what made you finally take that step to say yes I can do this hmm I guess uh the 20th time you get dared to do something and you go <laughs> well I can't do that and then you get down to it, just like what you were saying and you go well why can't I mm -hmm. okay I'd have to learn the audio yeah then what you have to get mm -hmm. guests okay then what and you realize all those kinds of things, those obstacles that you put in front of yourself, you can do them. You just have to put a little effort in, into it. But you don't want to be in life one of those people that goes, yeah, I could write a book and then you don't. Or yeah, I got a screenplay in me, so write it. And I just don't want to be one of those people that says stuff they're going to do and they don't do them. So, you know, sometimes it takes looking at the end game. Where do you want to be? I want to have a book. Okay. Mm -hmm. Your book has to have, you know, 150, 200 pages. Well, um, break it down. What is it about? Okay, you got that done. Um, what if you write one or two pages a day? You'll have a book done in three to four months if you go at that slow pace. You'll still have a book done if you do a little bit at a time. So I kind of had to realize with the podcast, all these little steps, I could break them down and, and get it done. And now uh, every two weeks it gets done. Oh, wow. Now, one of my expressions I always say is that there are cemeteries full of million dollar ideas. <laughs> That's a good one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ideas to their graves and don't any, do anything with it. You know, and then we have a comment from Francis and Francis says, I'm having trouble even taking a selfie. So for someone who has trouble taking a selfie, what would you say to them? Well, why is it that you have the trouble, Francis? Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll give you time to type that one out. But sometimes you have to think about like, well, why, why is it that you have that case? And what's the worst that can happen? You put the photo out and somebody laughs at you. Okay, but what do they ever do? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's wonderful advice. Um, when Francis responded, she typed it out. She said, I, what she's hearing is baby steps. 
So for her, it's like the selfie is that baby steps. But Francis, I love Francis. Francis is actually going to be a guest on my show on the 23rd of May. And we're going to announce her new book on my show. So people do start with baby steps. But I mean, you know, what's the worst that can happen, as you say? So what it, would it take? Are you looking for guests for your show? I mean, maybe, you know, you can have Sharifa Hardy on your show or, or people in the audience. Like, what would it take to be a guest on your show? I actually have what you'd call a luxury problem, where when I started doing interviews, it was like, take every opportunity you can, because if you say no, you'll miss out. And then now it's kind of the thing of, well, I'm doing one episode every two weeks. Mm-hmm. I got three slots per episode okay, now I have too many of them. What right. am I going to do? And, and right. so now it's like, okay, well, the next four episodes are kind of spoken for, but uh, do I now bump it up to four or five guests? And that might be too much for people to listen to. Kind of a luxury problem, and I haven't figured out the whole thing yet. The next episode is going to have five. I know Dion Warwick is on it. We're figuring out the other four right now. But Whoa, hey, you got it like that, Dion. Warwick? I gotta tune in and listen to that one. Oh, thanks. Yeah, she calls me Aaron right at the beginning. It's kind of funny, but um, <laughs> I think, um, <clears throat> pardon me about that. Um, technical mic difficulties right there. Um, mm-hmm. With When you say, like, how did you get Dion Warwick? Because, mm-hmm. you know, that's a person that sold tens of millions of records and a 60-year career and all that. And you, sometimes you gotta think, well, I'll ask her people. And if her mm-hmm. people say no, are there other people connected to her that might say yes? So mm-hmm. some of the interviews that I get are really, really, really famous people. And you're like, you? Mm-hmm. You got these famous people? Well, yeah, I just kept asking. That publicist mm-hmm. said no, so I went to management. Management said no, so I asked the venue where the person mm-hmm. is playing. That mm-hmm. venue said no. Well, maybe she's got a tour in, in, in a year. Maybe she's got a record label. And, mm-hmm. and a weird thing is, I'll get super, super famous people in mm-hmm. on a day's notice. And then there's other people who used to be famous 25 years ago. I'll be chasing them for three years. Mm-hmm. There's no correlation between attainability and fame, I'm finding. That's, that's one of the shocking things I've learned from doing interviews for 15 to 20 years now. Oh, wow. So let's talk about some of the other people you've interviewed. I definitely love Miss D.R. Warwick. Some, who are some of the other celebrities you've interviewed? Uh, past couple of months, I've had some good luck. I got Kelly Cuoco from uh, The Big Bang Theory. Mm-hmm. Um, one of my favorite ones I ever did was last summer. I spoke to Terry Crews, and that one was just, that was like, wait, I I get to speak to, to Terry Crews, mm-hmm. and I'm not paying him? Mm-hmm. Huh? Okay. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and that, that one I actually have on my YouTube channel and that was just such a, a privilege and honor, like his positivity. Uh, did mm-hmm. you ever read his book that he came out with like two years ago? No, I didn't. I haven't read his book, but you said you interviewed him about a year ago. Did you discuss anything with his um, sexual assault case? Because that was interesting to me. That, I'm going to say, was probably came out a month or two after this. He was there okay. to, uh, to plug Panera. <laughs> I, okay. I think they were cutting him a big check. And okay. so it was like, ask one or two minutes of questions about Panera and then anything you want. And then okay. I want to know about like uh, his diet and mm-hmm. his positive energy and his singing because he breaks into song a lot. And okay. if he'd actually done anything with his wife, because his wife's a great singer. And then right. before you know, oh, seven minutes, eight minutes, 10 minutes, time's up. So <laughs> that was that was just a you know, such a, a great experience. And mm-hmm. Gene Simmons from the band Kiss, I've gotten to speak to him twice in the last year and a half to two years. That mm-hmm. was a really, really great one. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, if people I mean, follow me on... But I love the whole Terry Crews. I mean, I love Gene Simmons, wonderful. <laughs> but, you know, normally when I, you know, I don't do gossip or, or um, you know, the, the T. That's not what I do. I talk to business owners and entrepreneurs. Mm-hmm. But when Terry Crews came out with his story, I mean, this was almost unlike anything else. For someone of his stature and a male to talk about being mm-hmm. se- sexually harassed, I mean, I think that that was just amazing. I would love to be able to have that conversation with him. Maybe I'll, I'll reach out to him and, and see what we can do. Now, you yeah. also have his inspired Francis because Francis just commented and she responded. She said, I'm going to start right now. She just posted a selfie. Whoa. 
Yes. So she said now she's loving the meat in me and enjoying this show. Darren, you see what you did to the people? Uh, you know what? I could be thanked. <laughs> I could be scolded. I don't know. I'd just say, you know, you know, again, it's like, what's the worst that can happen? You put up a selfie. You don't love it. Well, don't look at it. Just, mm -hmm. but, but, you know, if you're an author, mm -hmm. inevitably, if people are covering your book, they're going to mm -hmm. go, okay, uh, and I'll put up the article as soon as I get that headshot. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah, you can crop your cover into a headshot or something. You could cheat around that. But ultimately, if you're around for a long time, somebody's going to ask for a headshot. And yeah. Sooner or later, you got to do it. <laughs> yes, but what I find is we're harder on ourselves. Like, we, we see oh, yeah. that little hair that's out of place. You know, we should have, you know, put, that, put this on or did that or our mate, you know. When I first started doing the video cast, I was so adamant that everything had to be perfect. Now, months later, I'm like, I'm here. You know what I mean? I'm showing up. I probably should have put on some lipstick, but no. hey. <laughs> now, <laughs> no, I like, see, I like what you do because you have on interesting people who aren't doing 20 interviews a day. They're not part of junkets. So you're getting them like actually excited to be talking to you. And a lot mm -hmm. of the interviews I do, sometimes a publicist will let it like slip like, okay, well, they got a 915, a 930, 945, a 10, a 1015. Mm -hmm. And you think you're asking like questions they haven't heard before, but they've answered it three times that day and they're burnt out and they don't love giving the spiel. You're not dealing with that with, with your show. And, mm -hmm. you know, your enthusiasm always comes through. So, you know, praise and props to you for that one. Yes, I enjoy it. Now, podcaster, you have some wonderful people. Jim, Jane, Jean, ah, see, this is when I wish I could edit Jean Simmons as a guest on the show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, okay. How did you, you have the podcast. How did you go from that to being an author? Or did you go from being an author to being a podcast host? Tell us about your book. Uh, my first book, which came out at the end of last year, called uh, Pocket Cash, Your Happy Money. It's kind of about different ways you can make some extra side cash, some hustle money on the side while you're doing your job, while you're driving to your job, while you're on the way home from your job. A lot of it is stuff that I've done as a freelancer over the years. You know, I'm, I'm not above, you know, making some little pocket cash to do the things that I want to do in my off time. Mm -hmm. So I actually started that before the podcast, but it came out after the podcast. And the second book, which is called Good Advice from Professional Wrestling, I got a pretty famous wrestler to write the forward to it, but it's kind of like a self-help book for people that would never ever read a self-help book. Mm -hmm. And even if you go professional wrestling, that's the lowest form of entertainment ever, I think that you'd feel differently after you read this book and you realize that there's, in WWE, a Harvard schooled attorney on their roster in another company there's a dentist who's a wrestler you know the wrestlers have gotten a lot smarter and more insightful and who's better at branding than wrestlers you know they're able to sell to you i'm tough and that physical aspect so they're athletes but they're also actors but they're also improv people but they're also you know public speakers and they're also writers because they have to come up with the stuff that they're saying and doing on the fly so you know that's what that book is about and every now and then you'll, you'll look at one of my podcasts and you'll go okay three guests there's an author a musician and a wrestler i think that kind of represents who i am in that my interests are all over the place um I'll watch something really stupid and then something really insightful because I think that you can learn from all sorts of entertainment, all sorts of entrepreneurs. That was interesting. I want to go back to, to the first book though, because I, I, I know we can't give it all away. Where can people find the book so they can pick it up? Let us know that, but give us some kind of side hustles because I know exactly what you're talking about. I work for a company and I help them build this company for three years without receiving a paycheck or any type of compensation, just sweat equity and stock in the sure. company. But I still had to live in the meantime, and I wound up being an Uber driver for two years. Mm -hmm. So to me, Uber was like this saving grace that I still had a, a way to make money while I was able to work on the things that I love. So can you give us any other kind of quick tips without, you know, just right off the bat? Well, that one is definitely in the book, uh, talking about... Yeah. The, the different ride shares. I mean, mystery shopping is another thing that people do. Everybody knows, you know, mystery shopping or secret shopping, and everyone says they're going to do it, and very few people actually take the leap to do it. And 
a lot of the people who say they're going to do it actually get scammed in a way that they buy a list of companies, which is the scam. But, mm -hmm. the, you know, you just sign up with some of these companies and you, you take one or two of the assignments that no one else wants to take. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, you stick around. It's like any long-term thing. You, you do the thing that nobody wants to do, mm -hmm. show you're reliable, and then the better, better, better stuff comes. And before you know it, you're doing hotels and restaurants, things in airports, and all sorts mm -hmm. of things. You know, if you had to fly on a family vacation already, mm -hmm. instead of buying that $8 latte, why not get paid? and reimbursed and get that there and they get the sandwich at that place and et cetera, et cetera. And, you know, most chains and most big places have mystery shoppers. You know, I've been to concerts and baseball games, et cetera. So that's one thing you can do related to that. There's focus groups mm -hmm. that there's a lot of companies. You have to sign up for them one by one, but mm -hmm. you know, 50 bucks there, 200 bucks there. I think I once did one for 500 bucks mm -hmm. and it's just for a couple hours work, you know, yeah. not, not bad articles and freelance writing. You know, if I really am passionate about something, I'll do it for free. Mm -hmm. If I'm not passionate about it, you got to pay me. <laughs> so sometimes, you know, maybe you don't get paid, but you got mm -hmm. two free tickets or you got a dinner or something like that. And I'd say there's definite value in that. And, you know, if you like, and you don't mind it, Oh, about go ahead. Mystery shoppers. I like what you said about the mystery shoppers, you know, and again, I've been online since 1994. Mm -hmm. I've seen ads for mystery shoppers. I've seen emails for mystery shoppers, but I have yet in 25 years actually heard from a company that would allow me to be a mystery shopper. I, you know, I've seen the ads, but I've never seen an actual, you know, concrete way to sign up as the mystery shopper. Do you, in your book, do you give any legitimate websites that people can go to to become a mystery shopper? I do, yes. I, I give for every one of these hustles. I, I don't mind saying hustle. Some people hear hustle and they think hustle. negative. Okay, no. you love it. If you love it, this is your yeah, show. Not, it's on. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> I love that word. I'm a hustler. I hustle from sun up to sundown. Bingo. Yeah, uh, we got some links in there. And ultimately, it's free to sign up with all these companies. It's just some people get unfortunately victimized or scammed on this kind of thing. And when I started doing it in early 2007, mm -hmm. I said, I'm going to spend the next, you know, four or five hours just signing up with a bunch of these companies. Mm -hmm. I signed up and I created an email address to get their pitches. And then ultimately this scheduling person leaves that company and goes to another one. Well, you're in the old database, you're in the new one. Mm -hmm. And I guess it's been 12 ish, 12 and a half years. Um, people in my family, I've gotten them to do it. I've done thousands of them. That's kind of a frightening, frightening, <laughs> frightening <laughs> thing to think about, you know, staying at a four seasons and that kind of stuff. But mm -hmm. if you pay enough attention, you do that kind of stuff. Instead of me paying five, 600 bucks to stay at the four seasons to get mm -hmm. reimbursed and paid and rewards points. Mm -hmm. uh, I also talk a lot in, in the book about rewards points, mm -hmm. how if you buy something on a rewards earning credit card and you're getting, you know, two, three, four, five percent cash back on that. And then you also are able to use a thing like Ebates and mm -hmm. you're also accumulating miles. And it is also something in the rewards network. And mm -hmm. it's also potentially a business expense. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if you, if you add up things that way, it does go a long way. And suddenly you have hundreds of thousands of miles for free travel. No, I, you know, I'm, I'm taking notes. If you hadn't noticed, I'm over here. You just see all my, my Darren notes. I, I just, <laughs> now I'm like, I've heard of Ebates. I'm, I see all the commercials all day, every day, but I've never really just taken an action to go sign up, check it out. You know, because a lot of those rewards things and rewards points, sometimes people are like, ah, I, I don't really need that. I don't want to take the time. I don't want to go through the effort and I can be like that. But I'm, you know, I'm going to check out some mystery shopping just because I get bored and I like to do stuff. <laughs> and I love, I love to be a mystery shopper. And the reason I would love to be a mystery shopper is because I go into a lot of different places and people kind of, you know, don't treat me as if I, I'm going to buy anything. You right. know, they 
like, oh, you know, what is she doing in here? She's not going to get anything. She doesn't have any money. These are the, the things I read it on their, their faces, right. not something that they necessarily say. And so as a mystery shopper, I would love to go in and say, this is how I was treated. This is, this is what happened, you know, because I do it all the time. I'm, I don't, I'm not a mystery shopper, but I will email or call a company in a minute. I'm one of those people that loves to give a company feedback, you know. Yeah. So I'm, I'm going to check that out. Those are some excellent points. And again, give us the name of your, your books and where we can find them. So all the books are on Amazon. Um, uh, Pocket Cash, Your Happy Money is just a paperback. Uh, the good advice from professional wrestling is both an ebook and a paperback and they're both up there. And I like that. I like when people get them from Amazon and the reason why is because there's reviews on the pages and it's also tied together. Uh, if you look at my author page on Amazon, it links to some of the interviews that I've done over time and all that. I, I really like to have everything in one place, one place. Do you use muckrack at all? No, I don't. I've heard of muckrack, but I don't. I, I would I would recommend doing that because if somebody says, how can I find out more about your stuff? Muckrack, there's other things like authoring and all that, but you can put all your publications and all your articles, all your links and all that in one place. So somebody's trying to see, is this person legit? You just send them to that one place. And, you know, you know this, and I can tell from your book that you know this you know, you, you create your own internet footprint, unless, unless you get arrested and, <laughs> and, and a bunch of unwanted publicity comes out, you control your internet footprint. Mm -hmm. So it's really important every now and then to Google yourself, not to be a self-centered person, but to know mm -hmm. what do people know about me? What are they going to know about me? And I'm not saying spend hundreds of thousands of dollars in manipulating, but make sure your articles and the awesome things you do come up to the top of the results. Mm -hmm. Very, yeah, very important. Really it's very, very important. Thank you for bringing that up. Again, our listeners, and if you're just now tuning in, we are speaking with Darren Paltrowitz, and he is an author, he's a podcast <laughs> host, he's an entrepreneur, he is the man. He's given us some information, he's given us some tips. If you have questions, if you have comments, please feel free to ask them in the comment section. But that's an excellent tip that you were talking about as far as Googling yourself. And the funny thing is, I have to cut down on Googling myself. Like, <laughs> I have alerts and I Google myself honestly at least every three days. Mm -hmm. Every three days. And not really just I, I Google myself so I can see what's out there. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? I want to see what it looks like. If somebody were to look for me, what does that show? What does that come up? And then I also like to check my links. You know, they rise, they fall. So I want to see what's where, who's where, who's holding um, you know, what information. But one of the things you know, it's interesting that you mentioned Muckrack or these type of sites, because one of the things that I always try to do is own everything. I'm one, mm -hmm. I don't like to have any third party, anything. You know, everything has to be mine. You know, so that's one of the things that I focus on with AskSharifa.com is this is about me. So any articles, I, I should probably add more, of course. But I don't, I don't want, you know, because again, after 25 years, I've seen Hundreds and thousands, I would say. I'm exaggerating a little bit, but hundreds of thousands. Yeah, that sounds right. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're very prolific. You know, with that were there and they were the website and then now they're no longer around. Like I remember when PR yeah. Web was free. Yeah. I remember when Blog Talk Radio was free. Yeah. I remember when Net Zero was the defender of the free internet. You know, it's, it's like things and other companies change and I'm a control freak. Yeah, I, I, I did actually have to back up articles on a number of occasions where a site mm -hmm. I was writing for shut down or there was an editor change and someone's vengeful and says, I'm deleting your WordPress account. You go, uh, but, well, right. every now and then I make it a habit to, to go into the WordPress or the back end and see about mm -hmm. exporting all the files. But if the files went into a place like Muckrack, it's mm -hmm. permanently listed. Uh, mm -hmm. in your site and it's reverse chronological. So the, the most recent thing posted is pretty much at the top and how mm -hmm. many people are really going to scroll down, you know, dozens and dozens of pages. So, you know, if, if you protect your footprint and all that, when people do due diligence, you do get better interviews because, you know, the exact opposite of experience, you know, can, can, can I give a, can, can I give a negative story or we, we do no negatives. We do whatever we want on Ash Sharifa. That's why this is Ash Sharifa. Okay. Okay. So I'll put this one out there. About three, four weeks ago, mm -hmm. I got a pitch and they said, would you like to talk to Ashanti? I'm like, yeah, of course. 
And then the publicist, who's a great, great person, worked with her on a lot of stuff. She goes, okay, this is not for me. This is from Ashanti's manager slash mom. I go, okay, whatever. And she goes, have you interviewed anyone as famous as Ashanti before? Mm -hmm. And I know in my heart, I've interviewed people much, much, much more famous than Ashanti before. You know, mm -hmm. she, she had a lot of hit records, but those were, you know, 13 mm -hmm. to 15 years ago. Right. And, and you know, that, that is a case of a manager not Googling, not doing their <laughs> research. Because if she put in my name, she would see, oh, okay, there's Terry Crews. Okay, mm -hmm. you have <laughs> interviewed mm -hmm. people as famous. But if you don't protect your footprint, who else is mm -hmm. going to? Right. And you know what? That's interesting that you say. I love Ashanti. I love to interview her as well. But the thing that stood out to me in your, your story, and it's just, you know, people sometimes say negative and positive. I, I really don't always look at it like that. It's just life. It's just things that happen. I love to relate to people, my challenges, because so often, like, people will say, oh, you don't post negative. You shouldn't post negative things on social media. I post everything. You know, my life, if, if this was happening, I had a bad day that day, I'll, I'll share it. Now, I do try to phrase it in a positive way, and I mm -hmm. phrase it in a way that people can learn from the experience, but I don't think it's real to say everything is perfect, you know, right. that this is just this utopian kind of everything goes, you know, right. That's, again, why I love having Ash Sharifa is because people are going to start, you know, want to be a podcast. They're going to want to be like you. They're going to want to do what you do, and then when they get there and they try and they have a bad day or they have mm -hmm. some manager says, oh, we don't want to talk to you. They're going to be like, well, no, nobody told me I would have days like this. So I try to give them the good, the bad, the ugly, the indifferent, whatever it is, and just share those experiences. So thank you for being brave enough to share that experience. <laughs> now, you. I'm I working have... it out and I'm training the pain. Yes. I see, I see that behind you. <laughs> <laughs> People love that. I don't know why. I, I saw it. I loved it. I bought it, but they loved it. But Back to that whole situation for me, and, and I have to really watch, you know, because I've been doing this for 25 years. I've been, I started my first blog talk radio in 2009. Mm -hmm. You know, I've interviewed Patty LaBelle, I've interviewed Daphne Maxwell Reed, the mother from Fresh Prince of Bel Air. So oh, yeah. If I get any type of pushback as far as who I am, then I'm more like, well, maybe this is not a good fit for you, yeah. you know, because try to convince anyone to come on Ask Sharifa. I'm giving you an opportunity. I'm giving yeah. you a platform. There are people who want to hear from you. There are people who want to see you, you know, and if you don't want to talk to the people through me or you don't want to talk to me, that's okay. I love being 40 something, you know, because at 40 something, one of my favorite things is just, it's okay. You know, I'm not going to lose any sleep because there are people who want this opportunity. Yeah. Yeah, that all makes sense, um, you know, knowing your self-worth in that sense. And a lot of the times when I get turned down in, for interviews, at first it stings. And then mm -hmm. on the other hand, you realize, well, maybe there's a reason that the people are in the position that they're in. Or, well, I'll get them next time around. Or, eh, you know what, I, I'm glad that I now don't have to spend a half hour transcribing the interview and it's definitely more than a half hour and then another hour or two writing it and another 20 minutes promoting it. I'm glad I get those three hours of my life back and right. I don't have to wait, waste on somebody who is not going to be psyched to talk to me anyway. Right. For somebody who really wants that opportunity, you know, that's why I like to sit down and talk to people for a length of time, you know, because they want that opportunity. People, I started my first show my first blog talk radio show simply because a lot of business owners and entrepreneurs did not have a platform to talk about their business. Right. So most of them, even today, when they come and do their video cast, they say, you know what, this is new for me. I haven't done interviews and I'm excited. So I would really rather speak to someone who's excited at the opportunity versus someone who's like, how long are we going to be here? <laughs> right, right, right. Where's this going to go? How many followers? Do you have at least a million followers? And I'm like, you know, Maybe this just isn't a good fit, <laughs> you know, and, and I move on because it's so many people that you can talk to and speak to. So that's wonderful advice. But thank you again for sharing that experience. Yeah, I like another one of the facets of what I do with writing is I go on a lot of press trips um, mm -hmm. where they fly you to a destination and they want you to write about the city or the hotel or the convention center. And mm -hmm. a lot of the times they'll combine writers and influencers, uh, you know, mm -hmm. just social media influencers. And when you're getting to the bottom of what they do, if mm -hmm. the second thing that they mention is, I've got 200,000 
you know, followers, you go, okay, mm-hmm. so this person doesn't have 200,000 followers. Mm-hmm. Usually the right. first credentials that people are offering are usually like fake. I, I, that's mm-hmm. been my kind of experience that the more somebody's trying to justify their worth mm-hmm. immediately, mm-hmm. Uh, it, it's just not a good look, <laughs> you know? I, I don't know. I, I never thought about it like that. I, that's something I would have to give some thought to. I find it very interesting. I find you very interesting, Darren. You have a very, <laughs> <laughs> you have a very, you have yeah. a very unique way of looking at things. I love that. Well, pros and cons. I think that, um, that when you come from the music industry, Mm -hmm. uh, you're used to getting pitched things all day, every day. And Mm -hmm. at a certain point you have to think, well, this person can't be number one. There can't be 25 number ones. Where's Mm -hmm. the hole in this kind of argument? So, Mm -hmm. So you learn how to pick things apart and where are the holes and you learn like, oh no, they're, they're actually the kid of a dentist and mm-hmm. the dentist is bankrolling this whole thing. Or, oh no, this is the record company of, of a celebrity mm-hmm. who's just using it as a tax write-off. And all mm-hmm. that sounds negative, but like you said before, you're getting to what's real. And once mm-hmm. you can get to what's real, then you can start to enjoy everything. Mm-hmm. So I'm just used to as a writer and as a music industry and all that, picking apart, finding the hole, just be honest up front. You know, don't try and sell me that you're the best thing ever. I like good and very good and great. I don't need the best. Mm-hmm. No, but that's an excellent point. Being a podcast, video cast, uh, blog talk radio host, speaking with so many different people, I am very good at getting to the real and seeing the mm-hmm. real. And for me, that's that's because I understand entertainment. I understand celebrities. You know, there may be celebrities who have a name, and like you said, but they may have not done anything for 25 years, you know, and people always are impressed by the celebrities because of their names. And I know celebrities, like personally, who are sleeping on their mother's couches, yeah. you know what I mean? Because they haven't worked <laughs> in 25 years, but if they left the house, everybody be like, look, it's there. Yeah. You know, but it's like you don't have the bank account to go with it. And another thing people don't understand as far as celebrities and entertainment is that a celebrity may get paid, you know, $50,000 for a day's worth of work. And people are like, oh my God, I wish, I just wish I could make $50,000 for one day, for 24 hours, just for one day's worth of work. Right. But what people don't understand is that that one day may be the day in 365 days mm-hmm. that they actually worked, you know? So that's all they've done that year. And in that $50,000, they still have to pay taxes. They still have to mm-hmm. pay their agent. They still have to oh, pay yeah. their manager. They still have to pay out. They have to, you know, the cost of living. So they may have a name. And that's why, you know, it all, as a young child, I never knew what it meant why people would say, uh, rich and famous, you know, I was like, yeah. well, if you're rich, aren't you famous, you know, or I would feel like if you're famous, aren't you rich? And I was like, mm, okay, now, now I get it. Now I get it. Yeah, the, there's an interesting class of celebrities that I, I th- love this kind of stuff. Like if I said to you the name Andy Borowitz, do you know who he is? I do not. Look at, look for his name in the Fresh Prince of Bel Air credits. You mentioned you mentioned yeah. uh, knowing somebody on that show before, but I think yeah. he was the creator of it. Okay, that is some real mailbox money right there. So imagine being that guy. He he's done podcasting and, and writing and all that other stuff, but that's mm-hmm. a guy who's made his millions upon millions of dollars very 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 quietly. Mm-hmm. You know, he, no one is bothering him. And I, I like finding out about those kinds of people. Like, mm-hmm. if we're going to talk about songwriting, like Billy Squire, do you remember him from the 80s? It's okay if you don't. I do not. Okay, he had a bunch of hits, like The Stroke and all that. And you'd go, okay, 80s guy. Mm-hmm. Billy Squire has been sampled by hundreds of hip-hop artists. Like, 99 Problems by Jay-Z uses a drum loop for, from mm-hmm. a Billy Squire song. An Eminem single a couple of years ago used a Billy Squire thing. So that's a guy making mailbox money right there. And that's another thing that I talk about in the, in the pocket cash book. Mm-hmm. But I've always been intrigued by people who have wealth in an interesting way, but aren't super, super flaunting it. Like the people who mm-hmm. write songs for Broadway plays. Um, you know how the movie Pretty Woman is on Broadway right now? Yes. Yeah, One big hit. Favorite. Yes. Mm -hmm. It it just announced like a national tour today. And people Mm -hmm. are going, music by Brian Adams. And pretty much people know who Brian Adams is around the world. But Mm -hmm. most of Brian Adams' hit songs were written by a guy, or with a guy rather, named Jim Valance. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. And you don't know who Jim Valens is, but you know what? He co-wrote all those Brian Adams hits. Mm -hmm. Jim Valens has done just pretty well for himself. And I, you know, I've thought about all the time, I want to interview more and more of these kinds of people and get their stories out there. But a lot of times these people, you know, they don't want their story out there. They just love the idea of having the low visibility, high bank account kind of scenario. Yes, I mean, I'm completely on board. That's one of the reasons I have Crossroads TV. I can be a producer on different projects without doing any work, you know, to a certain extent. But one of the, let's go back to one of the things you mentioned, Darren, you said mailbox money. For yeah. people who are watching, for, for people who don't have a clue on what mailbox money is, can you explain that, that term? It's kind of an outdated term in a way because direct deposit, you know, you could get direct deposit for 87 cents. <laughs> you can get it on your tax return, all mm-hmm. sorts of businesses now, You like your employer might do direct deposit. But mailbox money kind of meant like you did the work once, and then mm-hmm. the checks just come in the mail. So right. if you're an actor and you appear in movies, if you write a song, mm-hmm. if you, you know, you trademark Royal. something, they're mm-hmm. royalties. And mm-hmm. uh, some musician friends of mine call it mailbox money. And I, I just mm-hmm. love that term. No, I love that term too. That's what I've been going for for 25 years. You know, because yeah. back in the day when PayPal first came out, that was like part of their marketing collateral. It was like, you just get up, just people pay you through PayPal. You wake up and you have all these messages from PayPal. You receive money, you receive money. And so that was the whole, kind of whole email inbox, mailbox money kind of approach that I've been working for. And hey, I'm finally getting there. So I'm excited about that. Now, we are coming down to the last few minutes of the show. If you are just now tuning in, we are speaking with Mr. Darren Paltrowitz. He's a podcaster, author. Go pick up his books on Amazon. He's in entertainment, music. He's interviewed everyone. If you have questions or con- comments, this is the time to go ahead and do it. But Darren, what I like to do at the end of every show is just sure. allow my guests the opportunity to just speak to our listeners, speak to our audience, and let them know what you want them to take away from your interview. Hmm. I think case in point, you know, not to be a broken record here is the majority of things that you'd like to do, you really can do. And if you break things down into smaller steps, you know, if you want to, if you want to make a movie, well, of course, realize all the components of it. There's got to be a script. There's got to be actors. There's got to be production. There has to be a release. There has to be a theater. And that could be super overwhelming. But if you said, well, my goal is to have a movie out in three years and here's the release date and you work backwards and you say, okay, my goal of week one is just to have a title. Week Mm -hmm. two, know who's directing it or, you know, buy the software to be able to make it on my computer. If you break everything down into smaller steps, whether it's making a book, starting a company, uh, getting sober, whatever it is, if you don't just try and immediately go on a crash diet, you know, crash diets fail. Sadly, mm-hmm. they fail. So everything can be done if you, you know, you allocate the, the, the resources, you have a positive mindset and all that. You know, I'm not the best writer. I'm not the second best writer, but I finished the book that I said that I was going to do. You know, mm-hmm. I had a, a very supportive co-author, DX Ferris. I think he wrote four books last year. Not four books ever, last year <laughs> mm-hmm. while having a family and while having a job and all that. And so they say, you know, if you want to get something done, give it to a busy person. Busy has good connotations, bad connotations. You just get stuff done. Don't just be the person in the bar that says that's, I'm going to write a book. Write it. Do it. Why not? See, you're a man after my own heart. That's my philosophy. <laughs> I'm like Nike. Just do it. Just you know, when it. I first started as a business consultant, I had I used to believe that so many people were going to start their business because they came to me and they like, Sharifa, I hate my boss. I hate my job. I hate my coworkers. I hate my commute. I have to get out there. Can you help me start a business? And I was like, oh, my God, I got to save this person. They hate everyone. Let me help them. And so I, I would go and then find, you know, only to find out these people still at those jobs. You know, they're still working at those jobs. Right. They're still one of the things that they hate because sometimes because they don't like something doesn't mean that they're they are actually going to make a change so i've learned to adjust with that but i tell everybody if you want to do something hey just freaking do it just do it and you know in just about every interview i do my last question is i say any last words for the kids and sometimes Mm -hmm. people just make a one-liner 
joke kind of thing, like, well, uh, eat your vegetables and drink your milk. And then other times people, you know, any last words for the kids? Uh, my new album is called this and come, come see my tour. And then other mm-hmm. people go, well, yeah, if you love something, you can do it. And there's sacrifices involved. And you get some kind of variation on that. And it's almost to the point where I go, I would be paying these people for this kind of advice. So I ask that, uh, you know, to CEOs, to comedians, and I'm learning stuff every day. They're learning stuff from every day. If you're not learning every day, you know, you're doing something wrong. Absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. So, Darren, where can people find you? So, www.paltrowitz.com. Paltrowitz, like Gwyneth Paltrow with an it's. Uh, <laughs> if you just put that name into, into Google, it'll take you everywhere. You know, at Paltrowitz on Twitter. My podcast is the Paltrowcast with Darren Paltrowitz. If you just put Paltrowitz in, in Amazon and you don't see my parents' names come up because they, they wrote a bunch of books too, uh, it's just out there. Darren Paltrowitz reach out to me. I will, if I can help you, if I can give you advice, don't be a stranger. I love it. Well, I want to thank you for being a guest on today's episode of Ask Sharifa. Sharifa, it was such a pleasure. We'll stay in touch. Keep me posted on everything. I'm looking to, to check out more of your episodes. Definitely. I definitely will. So I also have to thank everyone who tuned in. We had Marcel, Tanya, John, Kamal, Angelique, so thank many you. more who joined us on today's episode who were watching the hearts were flying i wish there was some here so people could see but they people don't always say anything but they do the hearts just to say we love you we're here so thank you everyone for your support and of course i have to thank my sponsor tammy sorrento who is amazing i wouldn't be able to do half of this without tammy sorrento and her company is fireball approves so if you're looking to rent an apartment a house a vacation rental whatever it is do not get scammed by anyone. Make sure that rental property is Fireball approved and you can do that at fireballapproves.com. And so if you're interested in being a guest, if you're interested in watching more of my interviews or for sponsorship opportunities, please visit the website at asksharifa.com. Until then, happy Wednesday, everyone.